So Simon, you've um, got an announcement to make to the Phoenix fans? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, after going through the uh, reviews with Tommy, myself, um, and our high performance staff, uh, come to the conclusion um, that uh, I think for the progress of our, our club um, and myself, um, I think we're better off in moving in different directions going forward. Um, so the club will be looking for a new head coach. Talk to us um, a bit about how the decision was reached in those discussions. Oh, it was pretty easy to be honest. Um, you know, like, I, I guess for me, I mean, almost going back to pre-season, um, you know, the, this had some thoughts that, um, you know, maybe not job dissatisfaction, that's probably the word. I wasn't enjoying it as much. Um, and then you sort of evaluate those thoughts and then you, you move them aside and you get on with the job. And um, over the course of the year, there's reared its head a couple of times where I thought, you know, is this worth it? Um, you know, it was a frustrating year on, on a number of fronts, but specifically, you know, just trying to get our pre-season together, get our players on the floor, injury, re-injury, um, and, and those things. And, and they're not excuses, it's just the, the job satisfaction from that standpoint. And it started to weigh on me pretty heavily. And um, I guess from that point, it was just, um, you know, do we want to do this? What's the best pathway for the club moving forward? And I honestly, a couple of weeks ago, took a phone call um, from someone who had a, a offer, not an offer, but a, a, a possible offer overseas. And for the first time in my life, I thought about other jobs and other opportunities. And um, then I had a phone call from some mates who had just come back from a concert um, over in the States. And I was sitting on the couch with my daughter and um, she's 11 years old. And she just said something to me at, at the end of the conversation. She's just like, Dad, I've never seen you so happy. And um, I was like, yeah, because you know, I was, we were talking about me taking a job over there and we we're just having fun with it. And, and it was just, um, you know, those things have been just sort of creeping up. And I guess at the end of the day, it's just like this, this job requires 100% dedication, which I, sure, but it's not, that's not a, a question. But on top of the dedication, you need the, the what, what it gives back to you. And, um, and if you can't enjoy the wins and the frustrations supersede the, um, the joy, then it's, it's time to go. It's, uh, well, well, have you got some thank yous to... to um, no, no, there is. I, I got a few thank yous because it's obviously been a pretty tough journey, five years. Um, for me and this bloke. And, um, you know, I'm going to go through real quick, so apologies to anyone I've left out. I hope I haven't, um, but I'm sure I did. Uh, firstly, the front office here at the Phoenix, just an amazing group of people. Um, well led, um, but an amazing group of people who, who dedicate themselves to their craft um, and get us up for game day in regards to all the preparation, all of those things. So, um, tireless workers, um, special shout out to a couple of the OGs um, from the front office who aren't with us anymore in regards to working. Um, I call them the Caribbean Garden crew. Um, so, Ed White, um, who was our original media guy, just a, a super bloke, and I've stayed in contact with um, vicariously through the social media stuff. Uh, Brooke Steindl and Cairns Duthie, just three wonderful original people that you know, built a real good bond with. Um, the year before we started. So um, shout out to them. Um, the, our club's game night volunteers um, who just every week, you know, you walk in the stadium, you see the sea of green. And if people understood just the, the work required to get into that, to get that up and about, um, it's huge. So I'm really thrilled with them and the work they do and, and, and just very thankful because without them, there's no us. Um, our sponsors, which I won't name them all because we've got a plethora of them, so well done to our um, corporate and marketing area. But um, I want a special shout out for Kerry at, at Lakahi Wellness in Kilsyth, just because um, just the relationship we've built and um, and the care that she's shown me and the playing group over the over the journey and um, bringing us in. Um, obviously, the players, past and present. Um, I'm not going to name names, but they're all of them love them and. Um, Learn something from everybody who's walked through the doors here. So um, just enjoyed our time together and, and, and look forward to our continued friendships. Um, our performance staff, uh, again, just another group of tireless workers. Um, I'll run through these, I had to write them down because there's too many, but our high performance manager, Erica Hollinsworth, who um, you know came over 
one of our original guys came over with me from, from Melbourne United to South East Melbourne. Um, our medical staff, um, our doctor, sorry, and Peter and Leah Harcourt. Um, our legendary physios in Avnish Kumar and, and, and Simon Wig, who unfortunately we overwork way too much. Um, our coaching staff throughout the years, uh, current staff, Lucas Allen and Craig Simpson, um, Ian Stacker, Judd Flavel and, and Luke Kendall, um, all have been one, wonderful contributors to to the first five years of this club um, with performance on the court. Um, and, and the coaches have volunteered their time. So we've had a, a number of local coaches who have come through um, over the journey uh, and volunteer their time when they can. Um, not just on the court, but also providing us with stats, emails, you know, with regards to, hey, look out for this and da da da. So um, Dom Anosia, Duncan Berg, Liam Glaskett, Jay Loma, um, Sanisha Markovic, and um, J Daniel Giancino. Um, we, we just call Shorty, because it's too hard to say. <laughs> um, another coach who's never stepped foot in the place, but I want to thank is Ken Cole, um, who has always um, provided me with phone calls, text messages, um, conversations, um, always encouraging. Um, except they seem to go missing the week before we play Adelaide 36ers. But uh, <laughs> he, he's a wonderful man. He's doing it hard at the moment. Um, but I want to thank Ken because he's just a ripper and love him to death. Um, my family, um, first and foremost, most important people in the world. Um, my wife, Karen, um, my, my daughters, Frankie and, and Mackenzie, and my son, Spencer, who have had to go without their dad for five years. Um, not without him, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, my in-laws, Johnny and Jen, Owens, who have um, really sort of filled the breach while I've been doing this job, um, running them around to their basketball Friday nights, Sunday mornings, um, just sort of filling in the gaps. And uh, my mates, um, both international and local, who I've completely dismissed for five years. <laughs> and um, I'm sure I'm owing about a thousand rounds of beer um, to all these blokes, but um, yeah, I've just missed them. Um, yeah, I really haven't seen them for five years, so. Um, Looking forward to catching up with them. Um, original blokes here, Rowan Short, um, our owner, Romy uh, Shattery, and Tommy Grigg, um, who we've gone through a lot together um, over five years, trying to build this thing from scratch uh, to where it is today, where I think it's a good, a solid brand in the basketball landscape, and to, to get there in a very um, tough market with, you know, there was a championship team in the town when we came into the into the group. Um, yeah, it, it's been a tough slog, um, a tireless slog, but I'll forever be thankful to Tommy um, for the work we've done together. And um, yeah, it just, I don't think anyone understands what he does and what he's had to do. And probably no one understands more than he does about what I've gone through the last five years as well. So um, just tremendously thankful and um, appreciative of the opportunity for two blokes who get to build a basketball club, a professional basketball club in their backyards. Pretty bloody cool. So, um, really thankful for that. And um, yeah, sorry to anyone who I forgot. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch out there, but yeah, just tremendously appreciative of the opportunities and the time here. Tommy, I guess that's a, a you know, good time for you to step in. Talks mm. about how much work you do, but how much work has he done to build this club? Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, you know, whilst uh, today might present as a somewhat sad day in, in many ways, it's to me it's 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 more of a celebration. Um, you know, uh, you know, Mitch touched on it um, just then, but sort of five years as a club, four years in terms of sort of seasons and performance on the floor, the amount of work um, required to be able to get that this club from. Um, you know, a piece of paper. I think Mitch, you're the second, third hire of the of the franchise. Third, I think. Third, third hire of the franchise. To get from that point, you know, to build a first roster, to get through the first four seasons, to have three winning seasons out of four, to make the postseason two of those four seasons, um, and to this year win the Battle of Melbourne uh, for the first time, is no easy accomplishment. Um, and I think that it's. Uh, very easily overlooked um, the amount of additional challenges a coach in a scenario like that is uh, burdened with um, you know in order to build a performance program from the ground up um, you know it's not come in and take over a culture that exists you are creating something from absolutely nothing and um, 
you know, it goes without saying, and it's it's widely um, agreed that uh, you know Simon has done just a tremendously amazing job uh, of doing that uh, here for the Phoenix um, and in his backyard, in our backyard of, of the heartland, and done an incredible job. So um, for me, this is um, more of a celebration of the work and the effort and the time um, that Mitch has put in. You know, one of the most, if not the <laughs> most tireless worker I've ever been around. Um, you talk about all that work that goes into it, and how you know people outside don't see that. Do you think um, people have been unkind to him at times? Look, I mean, pu public perception is public perception, and um, you know that's that's not really for for me or anyone to comment on. What I can come on comment on is is the man that I've worked with for the past five years, and how much I've enjoyed that relationship, and and what he's meant to this club. What does the club do now moving forward? Yeah, well, obviously we're um, we're going to be in market for a new head coach, so that's um, that's a process that will start almost immediately. You know, free agency is on the horizon, and as a club, we need to continue to move forward. That would be the only way to honour uh, the work and the, and the the effort that um, that Simon's put into putting the club in the position it's in. Do you need to have a coach in place before free agency kicks off? Is that the Oh, look, I mean, sometimes you need to work in less than ideal circumstances. Um, you know, we've seen it many times throughout the NBL with coaches and different positions um, uh, being hired late in the piece and at different moments throughout the year. So we'll, we'll do the best with the, with the hand we have um, and, you know, confident that um, as we've done every year previously, put together a, a, a very strong team. Um, Simon, in terms of you know making this decision, you know it's not often that you'll have the CEO and the coach sit next to each other and say, "Hey, this is what's this is what's happening." So, um, I, I imagine you've had some time to reflect on your four years in that short period, and you know what are your sort of first takeaways of of it, and how do you how do you look back on it? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, firstly, me and him are thick as thieves. It's not going to be we've done this together and. We always, it was never going to end in divorce. It's going to be mutual separation or whatever it is. It wasn't going to be, uh, yeah, we throw, we throw a lot of tantrum. And this is true. Like, this is kind of like five years of work and you, like, we have spent so many hours together, so many phone calls, late night text messages. It's never ending. Um, and we both had our share of tantrums, but never at each other. You know, this has always been a, a collaborative working together relationship and um, and it is right till this point and um, you know it's uh, like when I was coming to my end of the decision you know, I was thinking shit I'm kind of leaving Tommy in the lurch here he's got to get a coach he's got to put a team together da -da 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 -da. I feel bad about this <laughs> um, but at the end of the day you know it's sort of like um, I've got to make the best decision for my family and um, yeah so it made it it was difficult, but at the same time, you know, when we got together, we're having our, um, our, uh, we sat down to have our, uh, you know, review. It lasts about 30 seconds. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like, I think it's time, you know, and, and we, we were just in. Was that both sides? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, no, it was, it's just time. Um, I think we've, we've, we've pushed it really hard to get to where it is. Um, and I'm very honest with myself. And um, and I just the frustrations supersede the enjoyment for me, um, and I don't want it to hurt the team in any way. And I couldn't realistically go into free agency um, and say I'm looking forward to watching hundreds and hundreds of hours of film over the next couple of weeks. I just I'm, I've got nothing left there. I don't want to do it, um, and it's required. Like as soon as you start thinking that way, um, it's over. And so, yeah, it was, we got together, we sat down in this room, we looked at each other and just smiled and said, yeah, okay, I think it's time. So what's next? I mean, you talked about, you know, family, friends. I mean, I imagine that's gonna be the immediate kind of thing, but what's, have you got anything, any plans for down the track? Plans, immediate plans are, to enjoy the Megadeth tour, um, <laughs> smashing pumpkins at Turin with uh, Jane's Addiction, 
um, trivia I'm gonna be in town uh, aim on armor like, this, 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 I'm gonna just go and enjoy being with my friends being with my family um, although I'm already sick of chasing them around on a Friday night and a Sunday Arvo <laughs> chasing them all over Melbourne dropping them off at their sporting commitments but it's sort of as an it's a, it's a real eye-opener as to how much we rely upon our family to help us with that stuff um, but yeah after that we go find a job um, but I'm gonna enjoy the next couple of weeks and it'll be the first break I've had in five years so um, you know, I probably should have taken some breaks in between. <laughs> Maybe it would have uh, lasted, well, pushed a little further out. But at the end of the day, it's just um, I've given all I've got. And you know, I was having a, a word with yesterday with one of the uh, one of the other coaches in the league. He's called me up to say how hey, things going. Da, 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 da. And he's he's just, mate, you're insane. Just you know, hold on, keep going. Da, da, da. This is, and it's like, nah, I just can't do that. It's not. It's not how I operate, um, and it's uh, it's time for someone else to push this thing forward. There's no way I would be able to get if we had a pre-season like we did this year again, I would end up walking away, um, and that's not the time to do it. So you do it beforehand, and uh, yeah. You've got a background in accounting and finance and stuff, haven't you? So is it the, the finance? Do you, yeah. Do you want to stay in basketball, or is it is it you see yourself doing something different? So. My first full-time job in basketball, I'd been coaching for, I don't know, seven or eight odd years and playing for the 20 previous to that. So um, my first full-time job in basketball, I think I took about a, an $80,000 pay cut. Um, I worked about 30 hours more a week. <laughs> my starting time was three hours earlier and I'd get to Sandringham Stadium, wiping floors at 6 a.m. and the smell of the pine, the, 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 just the that walking into a gym were the happiest moments of my life. Um, so to go back into, you know, trying to hawk money to people and that sort of stuff, I, I doubt it. I think basketball's where my passion is. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could go back there and, and uh, carve out a career, but uh, no, I've got to follow the passions. Tommy, I guess just to finish up, can you talk about um, his standing in this franchise. Yeah, you know, it's it's difficult to put a um, you know to put succinctly into into a sentence. But um, you know, being that we're such a young franchise, there's there's really uh, not anyone who's had more of an impact um, on this franchise in this point of its history. You know, to start it from um, like I said before, start it from you know nothing but a piece of paper. We had no budget, no office, no. Training laptops. facility, you know, laptops, we had nothing. Um, uh, so to get it to a point where we are an established, well-regarded franchise within the NBL, um, with the success that we've had in such a short time frame, um, is largely um, due to the work and effort that, that Simon's put in. Um, so in terms of his standing at the club, it's something that, you know, over weeks and months to come, will ensure that we do a you know, an appropriate job of honouring uh, the best way we can.